proofing is the process of simulating output settings on a computer screen. People do this in order to see approximately what a print is going to look like. Soft proofing can also be used to test digital outputs. The steps needed to soft proof an image on screen in Photoshop or other Adobe programs like Adobe InDesign include number one, open the file, then once again make sure the correct color space, color profile, and color mode are set. Choose proof setup and then custom from the view menu. Make adjustments via the custom proof condition dialog box. These adjustments will vary depending on your needs and we can show you those in the next few slides for the details. When you're done, select OK to accept your soft proof settings. Once you do that, you should see immediate changes in your document. If you don't see much or any change, your output settings already closely match what you've been seeing on your screen, which is a bonus. Yeah, that's a good thing. So lastly here, when you're done soft proofing, you can reset your view by choosing either monitor RGB or working CMYK from the view proof setup menu. And you can also um, uncheck the proof colors from the view menu. And so here you can see the outline of how you would find your soft proof setting. And so go to the view menu and choose proof setup. You'll want to choose custom and then the customize proof condition dialog box will appear. And if you do nothing else, you can change device uh, you can change the option for device to simulate to whatever is your intended um, output. And so if you're preparing something for commercial printing, you might be told to use the one that you see on the screen here. But if we're doing this on campus, we'll choose the one that syncs to our printer and the paper combination that we're using for our intended output. Soft proof proofing settings are determined by your output intentions. For example, if I'm going to print my project, I'll adjust the soft proof for my intended printing process of choice. If I'm sending it to a commercial printer, I'd ask them which profile to use in order to sync to their color management process. If I'm printing at home, I'll install printer profiles for my printer and then choose the correct printer profile when soft proofing. Commercial printers often use the US web coded SWOP V2 or coded Gray call 2006, but it's always best to ask them which profile to sync to. And then I'm just going to interject. It's pronounced Grackle, oh. and I feel like that's okay for me to interject because I am the printing teacher. Okay. <laughs> uh, we currently use Canon Pixma Pro 1 photo inkjet printers in our labs on campus. When soft proofing to these printers, we must first install the correct printer profile for the printer and photo paper combination we're using if it isn't already available. However, as long as we use Canon Paper approved for the Pixma Pro 1, the profiles should be pre-installed. Installing printer profiles is covered in the advanced Photoshop courses we offer here at Salt Lake Community College. The profiles you'll need when printing on campus for ART 1280 will be available and ready to go if you're in one of our classes. Once the correct profile is available, you can choose it from the Device to Simulate drop-down menu within the Customize Proof Condition dialog box. Select OK to accept your proof settings. The colors in your image will change to simulate what can be expected when printing on the Canon Pixma Pro 1 when this specific printer profile is selected. You need to know that if you are soft proofing to one profile, but print to another, either on purpose or by accident, the results will not align. It's important to soft proof and print with the same profile. And so if you accidentally choose the matte paper and then you're printing to glossy paper or semi-gloss paper, um, you can't trust what you see on screen. Well, be what comes out of the other end of the printer. Soft proofing can even be done for digital outputs. Every computer screen, digital, billboard, etc. has a distinct color profile often referred to as a heat temperature. If you know the profile being used on your intended output, you can simulate it on your computer screen. Some digital soft proofing options include Adobe RGB, Apple RGB, Color Match RGB, sRGB, etc. So looking at these examples, you can see a slight change in the colors from the different soft proofing options. And some of their soft proofing options are going to be more drastic than others, right? And so if we look at here, three of the results, they're all different, but three of them kind of look similar. You really have to look at the details in the picture, but the fourth one in the bottom left hand corner, you can really see that that one's different. Okay, so Jessica, could you demo this for everyone? Yeah, so I downloaded this image, or we downloaded this image off of our uh, stock images website, and we want to see what it will look like in this case, maybe when we're going to print it. And so the first thing we should always do is we should never work in JPEG files, and so I'm going to make uh, a copy of it by choosing File, Save As, 
and I'll just toss it on the desktop for now and I'm not even going to bother changing the name of it since it's just for a demo. So now it is in the, the um, it is a native file so it's a Photoshop file. Um, you also want to make sure that your color profile and color space settings are set. I know that mine are set because I set them on my computer so I'm not going to double check them but I should take a look at image mode and then see what color mode it's in. If I'm planning to print it on the Canon PIXMA Pro 1 printers we have on campus, which I am, I'm going to leave it in RGB color mode. If I wasn't, I could change it to CMYK, get a little prompt that says you're going to destroy your color, and that's fine. And then you could see a slight change in the color that way. I'll go ahead and undo that. I did Command Z or Control Z on your keyboard. The next thing we can do to see a more accurate representation of what we see on the screen compared to what would come out the other end of a printer, um, we can go to the view menu, let's zoom in here, go to the view menu, choose proof setup, and then choose custom. Within the customize proof conditions dialog box, did you see that change? I haven't even made a decision yet, it's just whatever came up. You can see that it changes the way that you're seeing the image on the screen, which is good because it's a more accurate view of what you can expect when it comes out of the printer. The device to simulate drop down allows you to choose different profiles. And so if I was going to send this to a commercial printer and they told me that they're using the, let's see, working CMYK US web coded and I selected that profile, I would then be able to see a more accurate representation of what should come out of the commercial printing press when I'm done. For our class, we are using Canon Pixima uh, paper and printer and so I would choose that off the list and so what we're going to learn in the next video is the specific paper combination we use in our class and that is the Canon Pro 1 Photo Paper Pro Premium Matte and when I select that profile you can see how washed out it remains. In the next video we'll talk about how you could see this you don't like the way it's going to look and then figure out how to fix it so that you do get something that looks more bright and vibrant like you're expecting when you print your project.